Today's episode, y'all, is sponsored by Catchco. We have arrived. There we go. I kind of think that I'm gonna become a vlogger again. Once quarantine's over, maybe I'll become a vlogger. Let's go. Come on, y'all, come on. All right, guys, how I started filming and working with the Guggen Squad and even just meeting them because it was not long ago, I was not even making fishing content and we'll talk a little bit about that. I'll tell you the whole story. We're gonna do a little bit of fishing with the brand new released Yodo Worm by Catch Co. and uh, just have a good old day chatting it up. Just realized I was a little bright during this talking portion. I'm trying to get my exposure dialed in. We're also, Devin and I are going on a multi-day trip with the Hot Tamale, the Red Ranger RT-188P, our boat, and taking it uh, down south for a few days, hitting some new lakes we have never fished, so be looking out for more boat content. We're gonna do a little bit of bank fishing today, of course, and I am curious, I have a question for you guys what type of content you may want to see more of from me. And if you want to see less content from me, hear me out. For over 100 days now, Devin and I have been making one video per day on YouTube. And I'm just curious if you guys like that format. If you guys like the daily videos, I feel great about it. Uh, bringing our fans new content every single day. I just don't want there to be a lull in the, not necessarily quality of content, but maybe the video ideas. So I'm really looking to you guys for more video ideas. Curious if you'd rather see me throw something else into the mix, uh, fishing or non-fishing related, whether it's just more tournaments or challenges. You guys have talked a lot about tournaments. I think challenges are a lot of fun. You can uh, do something other than just go for the fish and talk about techniques and spice up the videos and that way we see a lot of fun challenges on other fishing channels pages. So just let me know what you guys think about that. Think of some of your favorite YouTubers. I'm sure they're probably not all fishing, or maybe they are. What are they doing that you enjoy watching? I have a lot of hobbies. I love playing the drums skateboarding, we like our cars, we could do more car videos and uh, maybe modifications to the vehicles. And just think about this. Even if we made two days a week dedicated to other styles of content, that's still bringing you more fishing content than a lot of other fishing YouTubers out there. It's, it's very common for many YouTubers to do three, four, five uploads on YouTube per week. Well, you guys would still be getting five fishing videos a week if we still continue to do one upload per day, but added in two other genres into the mix. But I want to hear your opinion. So now let's get into the rest of today's video. All right, guys, allow us to segue into the next portion of today's video. Look at how organized we are out here. I'm going to grab a spinning combo. I think I'm actually gonna grab one of the rigs that I took up north with me. This could be fun. This is like six pound liter. All right, all right. We have arrived. Grab the goodies. We're only carrying one thing. What a dream. Where did my drop shot weight just fall? Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. I brought more in the car, but this is like an expensive one where if you get snagged, you can like, it pops. Why, why did that just happen? I really don't think I'm gonna find this. Ah, yo. Yo, this actually looks kind of promising. Like look at this grass right here. A Little bit of shade for these fish to hang out in. I am definitely gonna lose some uh, baits here. Six pound line, I don't know. All right, let's rig up one of these Yoda worms. That is literally, that is literally like an Escalade with red rims. I don't know if that was a Tahoe or a Suburban, but it had red, bright red wheels. All right, man, what do y'all say we get into the topic of today's video? I wanna just tell you up front, like the majority of me collaborating and meeting bigger channels and pages and things of that nature came through Instagram. I'm just gonna tell you that right off the bat. I was working on my channel for a while. You know, I had made videos doing moto vlogs before fishing and a lot of that for about a year. I think I made like 52 videos. I made like one video a week. Had built up to like 2,000 subscribers and uh, kind of stopped after a while. We sold the motorcycles. So I kind of stopped that. Devin and I would go fishing here and there, like for catfish with her dad or just random things of that nature. Or maybe even like bass fishing on occasion. I didn't know what I was doing. I wouldn't even touch the fish. And so I started looking up uh, videos on how to hold a bass. I think I've told, you guys have heard that story sometimes. Oh wow, that's actually a decent bass right there. I just spooked him. Check the mic, make sure we're still in range. Looks to be uh, looks to be good. I think you guys can hear me. Wow, there is so much grass. This is not going to be good for this light setup. I'm going to just I'm going to just pitch this right here. I'm going to see if that bass comes back to eat this thing because see how this works right here. 
Yeah, man, so I uh, watched a video by Fishing With Flair. I don't know if you guys know that dude. Anyways, I was looking up how to hold a bass because Devin would always get the bass off the hook for me because I didn't really like touching fish. Uh, still don't really care for catfish too much if you guys see me catch one of those on occasion. Don't really care for them. And, <laughs> and I started seeing some fishing vlogs. Now, hold on a minute. I was like, fishing has never seemed this interesting. Like, fishing has seemed like a waste of time, boring. I was not into it. Dude, shut up. I let him get off. I just, wow. We just had a fish, like the, the first real cast, the first cast out into some decent water. And there went my drop shot weight. Okay, let's get back in the game. Uh, Jeremy, J-Dubs Adventures, bro. If you're watching this video, that was the nice expensive drop shot weight you gave me that I told myself I wasn't gonna lose. Apologies. Now I'm on some Carl's drop shot weights, which uh, brings me to the point, before we get in any further into the conversation, I wanna take a second to thank today's sponsor, Catch Co. Man. They've been longtime supporters of uh, not just me, but also the Guggen Squad members themselves. And uh, yeah, they're taking care of us on today's video, man, helping support our journey to go full time. You know, we are so eager to hit 100,000 subscribers. Why was it windy? If you guys aren't subscribed already, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're into the fishing and outdoors content, we occasionally drop some random bombs in with the mix as well. But Catchco, man, they just launched this bait. I tell you what, the, the summertime bite has been so off lately. I mean, this heat has been insane. And to uh, get a bite in the first 10 minutes on the brand newly launched Yoda Worm is pretty dope. You guys can pick this up. They got so many different colors. Texas rigged this thing, put it on the back of a spinner bait, chatter bait. Uh, it's, it's all fair game with this deal right here, moving baits, or you can just uh, straight up Texas rig it. It's actually designed to where the head is flat so it lines up with bullet weights nicely. I've got a drop shot it today, just trying to finesse things down and get more hits and I'm, I'm catching a lot of grass, I will tell you that, but I just gotta get to the bass before I get to the grass. So, Catch Co, thank you guys for sponsoring today's episode. Let's get back to talking about how we met the Guggen. So, I, uh, I had this dream of now making it big on YouTube, watching these fishing vlogs. I'm like, I wanna get into fishing vlogs. I had not even heard of a bait caster or knew what it was called. I started watching the fishing videos and everyone's using them and I'm like, what are these reels? So I started looking that up and of course we found out what a bait caster was and the gear almost interested me more than catching the fish. I was like, this is cool stuff. So we got our first bait caster. It was some, uh, I think the first ones we really spent money on were the, the Speed Demons by Cast King or whatever. I know Flair had promoted those and a couple other YouTubers had promoted those things. And we got right into it. So I started making the content. If you wanna have the opportunity to meet these folks, you gotta get in front of them. So what did I do? I spent the last year and a half making as many posts as I could on Instagram, upping my game on YouTube, being more consistent, uh, using the products that they align themselves with and building relationships with the companies that they were working with. I DM'd them nonstop, constantly. I mean, I DM'd each one of the Googans more times than I can count before ever getting a reply. Some people are like, oh, I've sent like two DMs, or I've, you know, I've sent like five DMs. Like, bitch, you think they're gonna see that in their hundreds or thousands of DMs they get on a daily basis? I message them nonstop, guys, you have no clue. Always tagging them in my stories. And you know what's crazy is I talk about stories so much and how important they are in the role of showing your fans behind the scenes. Well, stories are actually the reason I met up with any of the guys. That was the first point of contact, was uh, I was posting the cars that I was valet parking at work yeah, so I literally posted like a picture of a car I had parked at work and John B responded and I was like, no way. He replied to like what type of car it was and saying that was like his realistic dream car. And, uh, and then, you know, eventually got the opportunity to fish with him through consistent DMs and using like the bandito bugs and stuff when Guggen baits were freshly, uh, were fresh to the market. Essentially countless exposures to the Guggens, to mystery tackle box, to favorite rods when I was throwing them and they were partnered with them. All the little things add up is what I'm saying, guys. I may have to move spots to catch anything on this Yodo worm because even if I get a hit and something's on the hook, it's going to take me right into this grass and I'm not going to get it with this equipment here. This is, I'll say it again light gear. So yeah, the first thing that got John to respond to me was actually a photo of a car. The first thing that got uh, Rob to respond to me, Lunkers TV, you guys know him well, was uh, a CrossFit post that I put on my story. I mean, so you got to be showcasing your lifestyle and behind the scenes because there's something unique to you that people are interested in, and not enough folks are posting on their stories on Instagram. Now when it comes to YouTube, I probably had 2,000, 3,000 maybe 4,000 subscribers when I was first introduced to the, uh, to the squad. And I wanna say the first time I had linked up with John B through hard work on Instagram was uh, really maybe four or 5,000 followers. So you just gotta, you don't have to be the biggest page to get in front of these people, but you do have to work your butt off and, and try and provide value. Try and provide value to the people that you wanna meet. You, you, might, you might not like the Googans, you might hate the Googan squad, I could care less, that's on you. But when it comes to anybody you wanna meet, 
tag them as much as possible. Be in front of them, as many exposures as you can. I mean, really what it came down to for me, all in all, is hard work and consistency. Consistency is really is number one almost. Consistency is almost above all else. I was consistently making posts, fishing, reaching out to them over and over and over, day in and day out. I've literally, like, I haven't worked as hard at my, I shouldn't say I haven't worked as hard at my job, <laughs> but I haven't worked like as many hours at my job, like 40 hours a week or 30 hours a week what I was pulling in valet nights and weekends as I have working Instagram and YouTube. This is like 24 seven. I'm filming a video a day. I am doing three posts a day on Instagram. Not to say that what I do is the right way or not, uh, but we have grown pretty quickly through that hard work and so if you're not reaching out to these companies if you're not tagging these companies if you're not using their products and uh, providing them some value up front you know you can't just try and receive right off the bat you got to give a little bit I use their products free promotion for the longest time now what does that matter to a guy that doesn't have that big of a following at that time it it makes all the difference really you're putting in the work up front you have to do that with a lot of these companies before favorite rods sent me over three thousand bucks in free rods i bought the first one and started using it tagging the heck out of them and i made more posts in 2019 using their products than anybody else in fishing 100 percent guarantee you i made more posts using favorite rods than anybody and i sold over a hundred thousand dollars in their rods that year and so like it's just it's just it's just posting i don't know it's just posting you want something you go after it same thing with mtb Devin had uh, bought me a subscription for Christmas and we started doing, we started we're trying to get those MTB slams. We started using their baits, loving the product. And then MTB reached out to us after, a, you know, not even that long. And they were one of the first companies to reach out to us. I probably had two, three, four thousand followers. I mean, it wasn't like I had a huge, huge following, right? And uh, they offered to send us a free box every month. Same thing with now the Guggens. I mean, I've been tagging them. I've been using their stuff. Uh, you hear me say the same stuff over and over again. We got to move spots. This is ridiculous. All right, man, we coming over here. We're going to work on all this. Look at this grass line. Let's hit this. I would hit those docks, but I haven't had much luck at them lately. So let's just cast out here deep. We'll, we'll get something. Did I mention to you all the time of day or how hot it is? It is five o'clock on this beautiful Sunday, the 19th. 96 degrees feels like 103. Um, She's toasty, boys. Yeah, so I don't want to just repeat myself and say the same stuff over and over, but if you guys have a large following, utilize that, take advantage of it. I mean, that, that is why you're working so hard. I mean, I assume you're trying to possibly, if you're really focused on growing, making an income, collaborating with bigger pages, collaborating with bigger channels. I mean, this is, this is like many people's goals nowadays with this social media. So if you have a large TikTok following, start tagging and using the company's products that you want to work with. Start tagging the people that you want to collaborate with. If you got a large Instagram following, same thing. If you're on YouTube and you've got a big subscriber base, uh, unfortunately, my videos on YouTube were not what led to a lot of my brand deals and the people I've met. I just, I just, that wasn't how it happened for me. It was all Instagram. I mean, literally Instagram has been so powerful for me, which is why I talk so highly of it. For many people, they built their YouTube up and then their YouTube subscribers transferred into followers on Instagram. So they, uh, most people that I know that are big on YouTube uh, take Instagram as their or treat it as their secondary. For me, it's almost the primary. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm hustling to make YouTube my primary. I want YouTube to be the primary. But uh, Instagram for me has been the primary when it comes to almost any opportunities I have got within the fishing space and the people I've met. So, guys, all I'm saying is work your butts off, start tagging these people, get in front of them, and you will have the opportunity to meet and work with and film with a lot of your favorite YouTubers, uh, a lot of your big favorite pages. I've had nothing but a lot of fun with it, and I know it's possible for you guys too. Just get out there and do it, man. With that being said, where are these fish at? I know they'll hit the Yoda worm. We got one like the first cast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast around these docks. I'm gonna go over here by this waterfall, and I'm gonna see if we can't get a fish before we end today's video for you guys. How about that? Look at these pads right here. Look at the shade. Got to be a fish. Gotta be a fish. I'm probably working this thing too fast. I should probably just let it sit. Literally let that first fish go. Today's video isn't over, by the way, guys. We still got to go get the hot tamale out of storage and get ready for tomorrow's excursion. Uh, probably take the kayak trailer to the uh, storage unit. That way it's not just uh, in the garage and we can keep the STI locked up while we're gone. So you still got that to look forward to. If you guys haven't seen the boat yet, get ready. All right, we're, we're actually way out there now. We're kind of out deep. This might be the one right here. This might be the one. Look at all this shade. Where's the bass? See, this is where I could have brought like a Texas rig or something, and it might have been a little bit better. I could kind of get under these pads right here. Yeah. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. Yo, and what a fight on this little setup right here. Come on, bud. He's about a pound. Come on. Yo, don't want to bring it home. He's going in the grass. Guys, he's taking me in the grass. This is not good. This is not good. 
This is not good. I think we got him. Woo! <laughs> it's a little guy, y'all. But I can't jeopardize this rod because this is a medium light. Oh, you guys can't even see me. Well, that sucks. Anyways, I'm going to grab this bass out of the water, not utilizing this rod very much. Oh, gotcha, son. Absolutely choked it, y'all. Yes. I don't know how we lost the Yoda worm, but it is off the hook. It must have been when he flopped out of the air and he just thrashed. That's unfortunate. That has got to be one of my favorite summertime baits with the bites I've already got in like the last half an hour compared to all my days of fishing recently. Thanks, little guy. Caught our fish for the day. I'm actually going to stick around. This is kind of fun. I'm going to try and get one or two more for you guys, and then we'll head out of here. See you, bud. This scent is actually fantastic. Mm, that'll get the bass going. Can you all smell that through the mic? I mean, that's, that smells dangerous right there. That smells like it's going to get bit. Okay, tell me how you can see these and not try and cast by them. Holy hot concrete. Okay, you know what? I'm Are we still in range? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I had bites. By the way, if y'all are in the market for some very high quality Shimano gear, I will link these uh, CI4s and this Zodius rod down in the description for you guys. It would be wrong of me not to do so. The stuff is so sick. Built for each other. I mean, it's like carbon. Stuff's ridiculous. If y'all want to scoop this up for yourselves, I will put that down there for you. One more idea. Okay, y'all. I've had excellent luck hitting this waterfall in the past. Let's give this thing a shot real fast. Yeah, I got a, I got a good feeling about this. That current gets the bass going. I imagine the water's a little bit cooler because of all that flow. This might be the hangout. Also, the bottom feels a little bit better, kind of like a harder bottom, not as much grass yet. Maybe I just got lucky with the cast placement. Yeah, guys, so I also would love to hear your thoughts and comments about what you guys have done to get in touch with some of the bigger influencers that you've actually maybe collaborated with or met. Uh, so don't be shy. Let's get active in the comments section. I'm going to be down there trying to answer as many questions as possible. And uh, let's just have a good old time with it. Let me know if you guys want to see a kayak video here. This place would be a dream for the kayaks. Where these fish be, boys? All right, I'm calling it. Last cast. We'll work it back slow. Hopefully we don't ca get caught in grass. All right, hold up. I got to get one under this waterfall. There we go. Literally bounced off the rock. Full send. Last cast. Guaranteed. Oh, that was definitely the last one. Snag City. Oh, wow. Did I get it free? I got it free. Okay, last cast. I think. Oh. Got him. Got him. Last cast, baby. I told you. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh! Whoa! He's taking drag, y'all. He just... <laughs> oh, he's... Oh, he's fighting. Come on over. Oh, slippery. 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 Come here. That's light line. That's light line. Yeah, there we go. Got the Yodo worm. Hook set in the top of the mouth. Oh, gosh. He was pinned. That was a fun fight right there. That was a fun fight. <laughs> All right, bud. Thank you so much. That was, that was too much fun. We'll see you, bud. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was more fish caught today than like in my last 20 videos. <laughs> so that's saying quite a bit, y'all. Summertime's been rough. If it's been rough for you guys too, don't forget you can pick up some of these Yodo worms. They got a ton of colorway options. The things have been nothing but fantastic for me. And uh, they will get the job done when the bass are not eating much else. Let me tell you that much. Drop shot rig is the way to go. I did a little Palomar knot with my one-aught stickies hook that's available at Carl's Bait and Tackle along with the Yodo worms and so are these Carl's drop shot weights. Everything you need is on Carl's Bait and Tackle. Catch Go, thank you guys for sponsoring the video. Let's go ahead and grab the hot tamale and close this thing out for you guys. We got a big trip coming up. We're literally waking up at 2.30 in the morning tomorrow to get where we need to be by sunrise. It's gonna be a fun trip, you guys. Let's go. Max. What, this is what I come home to? How am I supposed to do a slam with you sitting on the boxes? Huh? Tell you, man, can't get nothing done with all these cats around here. Let's go ahead and load up the boat for this trip, man. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. We are gonna go ahead, take the hot tamale out. I brought the kayaks with me. I'm gonna put the kayaks in here and uh, yeah, leave a little garage space for the STI. It has been a fun one, man, and I hope you guys are ready for this little tour we're gonna do down south, hitting some new lakes. We are pretty pumped. It's gonna be like three nights in a cabin, and uh, I'm not gonna spoil too much of it. You guys are gonna see if you're subscribed and hit the notifications, then y'all will see the alerts on your phones when the videos drop. Till then, peace. <gasps>